I want to show you my render settings for when I'm done with the video and I want to show you my and I want to show you how to create proxies to edit faster without any lagging when you're playing back. And that's going to help for working with huge resolution footage like red footage or even 4K footage. And it's also going to help with people that have lower power, low powered laptops and PCs that whenever you click play, it's not going to play as smooth. You'll see this is in 6K resolution. So look, I press play. Nothing's happening. And this is something that I think the wording of whenever people explain it, it kind of turns off a lot of people. A lot of people just don't want to do proxies. They want to fight through it. I'm going to try and make it as easy to understand understand as possible for you guys. So, so for the proxies, you're going to want to do this before you start the main edit. Let's start creating proxies for just these intro clips, these 5k intro clips. So the first thing you want to do is you want to get some information about the clip itself. You want to right click, you want to go to reveal in a project here, and it's going to pop up in where, and it's going to show you where it is in your project bin. Now, if you hover over it, You'll see that little gray box It's going to show you your resolution and it's going to show you the frame rate. So this is 6K resolution shot on red and it's shot at 24 frames per second. So to create the proxy, you're going to want to go up to file, new, sequence, and just create a sequence. It doesn't matter about the sequence settings because we're going to change them once we drag the clip in. Next, go into your project bin, wherever that clip that you want to create the proxy is. Now, luckily, we created these bins beforehand, and this is another reason why I say creating the bins in the project or dragging in already made folders with organized clips is going to help a lot because I can go to intro here and I can just drag in this first clip. Now it's going to pop up and say sequence settings don't match because we're dragging a six clay, we're dragging a 6K resolution clip into a 1080p project. So I'm just going to click change sequence settings for now. Our main edit sequence is going to be 1080p, 1920 by 1080. We're going to downscale it, but don't worry about that for now. Don't get confused. Just follow along with the steps. And we just want to play it back a little bit more smooth. So if we go up to file, export, media, this is how you normally export whenever you're finished. We're going to see you're going to see your basic video settings with 6144 height 2592. We want to make proxies that are downscaling this. So, and before we jump ahead of ourselves, what really is a proxy? A proxy file is basically just a replacement file that's a lower downscaled resolution of the main one. And that downscaled resolution version of the clip is just going to be linked so that whenever you click this little button here, toggle proxies, if you're not seeing that, you can click this button editor and then you'll see here it is. You can just drag that right there. Drag that into there so you can see the toggle proxy button. So whenever you're editing, you can just click this toggle proxy button and it'll show the low resolution version that it's easier to that's easier to play back. So you can edit it with the low resolution version and then when you're done, you just click this button and then you export. So that's essentially what a proxy is. It's just the same exact clip, but it's downscaled in resolution and it's linked using this button. And I'm gonna show you how to link it and create it. So stepping back, you go up to file, export, media now when it comes to downscaling it's basically divisible of a res divisible of the resolution there's a lot of technical jargon when it comes to actually calculating how to downscale it an easy way to do it is just go online to the site go online to the site that's going to be linked down in the description resolution scale calculator go ahead and click it i'm going to have this exact link down here save this bookmark it whatever so you're just going to want to enter your width and height and you can get that from premiere it says your width and height right here, 6144 by 2592. So back on Google, 6144-2592. So now we entered our width and height. Now it's showing all the downscale resolutions that you can use that is still going to keep the same aspect ratio. So we're downscaling it and keeping the aspect ratio. It's super important to know. So let's say we want to make a proxy that's 512 by 216 resolution. It's going to be the same aspect ratio as if it was 6K, just downscaled in resolution. So 512 by 216. Remember that number? Hop into Adobe Premiere. Click this checkbox so that we can actually start editing our width and height. And then just copy and paste the value there. So 512 by 216. 512, 216. And you'll see nothing really changed over here because it's the same aspect ratio. And we're going to create a super nice custom preset that just makes this low bit rate and easy to use. Now, the way I did it, I made our target bit rate 1.5. 
and maximum bitrate three. And keep in mind, this is with a six click. This is with a six K clip. You can kind of judge what it's going to look like. Estimated file size is five megabytes, and this is a thirty second clip. If you're working with four K, maybe you don't need to do that low of a bitrate, but it's not really going to harm it because it's just a proxy file. As long as you can see what's going on, it's fine. I did it with this low bit rate and it was completely fine as I was using the proxy. And that's under the video tab if you guys were wondering. So you just scroll down here after you set your resolution, scroll down, bitcode, bitrate encoding under your bitrate settings tab here. I made that 1.5 for our target, maximum is three. And that's really all you need to do. Now we're gonna save this as a preset and then make a proxy. So to save that as a preset, go ahead and click this little button here that says save preset. And I'm just gonna name this proxy test and click OK. So now if you click this little preset button here, you're going to see all of my proxies which I've created. So here's a 5K, here's 5K footage downscaled, 6K footage downscaled, and then here's some other ones. And then at the end, I'll show you this YouTube Super HD and some other render settings. And of course, you don't have to do it with H2.64. If you guys like using QuickTime, you can do QuickTime proxies as well. Just set it to QuickTime. Whenever you're working with your presets, just go about the same exact way. This 24P one, just make sure you're downscaling it and you're using the same with resolution downscale calculator I was talking about before. All right, so we have our preset saved. If you wanna see what the proxy is really gonna look like whenever you're editing, you could render this out, but it's not essential. Let's just do it. So we'll go to proxy test and I'll just name this proxy test save it, export it. It's gonna take about a minute to do this just because it's downscaling such a huge resolution clip to a tiny little file. This one minute is light years faster if you were trying to export with such a big resolution. Okay, so we made our proxy preset. Here's where things are gonna get a little bit annoying. Like I said, it's worth it for if you're working with bigger resolution. You need to redo the exact steps I just showed you for any clip that has different sequence settings from this one. So this is 6K at 24 frames per second. If you have something that's 6K at 60 frames per second, 6K 24, so that's good. But for some of these things that are in a different bin, like the B-roll, this is all 5K at 23 at 24 frames per second. In my performance scenes, 5K at 60 frames per second. So now what I would need to do is go to file, new sequence, and repeat those steps, but with these clips. So this is the same thing, it's 5K. I can use the same downscaling. We'll change sequence settings to match, except you need to do it because it's 60 frames. So if you have something that's a different resolution clip, redo the steps to create proxy for that resolution in those settings. If you have something that's a different frame rate, but the same resolution, make a proxy for maybe 30, 24 frames, and then make a proxy for your slow motion clips, your 60 frames. So anything with different sequence settings, make that, make its own specific matching proxy. The only difference here is this is 60 frames per second. So I would save this preset and I would name it 5K proxy and I'll name this one 60 frames per second instead of 24 frames per second. So save your preset. Once you made all of those presets, now you're gonna need Adobe Media Encoder. And this comes with the Adobe Suite. A lot of you probably have it already there for free. Just go to your creative cloud here, Adobe Media Encoder, you may need to update. Just make sure you're using the same version as the Adobe Premiere version. I'm using an older version of Premiere. I think I'm using 2018. So I'm using 2018 Media Encoder, 0.12. So I'll go ahead and open up this Media Encoder and we're, gonna go, and we're going to make our proxy. So step one for making this, just to re-go over what we did. Step one is put it in its own sequence that matches the sequence settings. So file new sequence, and then you just drag whatever clip in you wanna do. So this is all for the 5K 60 frames, and you change the sequence settings. You go ahead and you go to File, Export Media. You can rewind the video and use the downscale calculator and do the settings that I did, and then save the preset. Once you've done that, you hop into Adobe Media Encoder here, and we're gonna to go to Preset, Create Ingest Preset. This box will pop up. We're gonna name this the same thing we named our preset in Adobe Premiere. So I'm gonna name this um, 5K 60 frames per second proxy. Destination, you can save where you want the actual proxy files to be. So I just made a folder named proxies next to my original footage. You can just click browse for location and mine is right here. I have this own little proxies folder and it corresponds to all the other folders I have. 
you can just select whatever folder wherever you want to place it once you've done that this is where you actually select the presets that you created from adobe premiere so click the one that you made so this was 5k 60 frames per second here it is here and then just click ok and it'll create that proxy preset from adobe media encoder that's all you need to do here now all you need to do is just leave this open you can hop back into the bin where we have everything so for my intro bin these are all 6k at 24 frames per second you can just select all these clips just make sure that these are all the same settings these are all 6k 24 if any of these had different settings i would use i wouldn't select it i'd place it in a different proxy for the 6k 24 frames per second i'm going to right click and i'm going to click proxy create proxies now i'm going to go ahead and click add ingest preset and you're going to want to go to documents adobe adobe media encoder and then whatever version of premiere and then presets and then find the preset that you put in here it's pretty annoying to do this um, but that's just the way you have to do it it'll be the epr file and usually it creates a copy you just choose the one that's a bigger file size so i've already done this i don't need to actually do that once you put the preset into adobe premiere like how i just showed you you won't have to every time add the ingest preset you can just click this drop down and i do and it'll already be here selected so once you do it one time, you'll never have to do it again. It'll be a lot easier. It's just complicated to set up at first, but hopefully this explanation is easy to understand. 5K, 24 frames per second. So I'll go to proxy, create proxies, and then I'll select 5K here, 24 frames per second. And then you'll see this is the destination where it'll export. This is going to the green screen folder. We don't want that. We want this to go to the intro folder that I made here. I'll even just make another little one here called test. This is gonna go here and we click OK. Now it's gonna say creating proxy job. If you hop back into Adobe Media Encoder, you'll see since we selected all of those, now it's gonna start exporting all of those in the tiny little downscaled um, settings that we had before. And it's gonna be a lot faster. That's why we have those tiny, horrible resolution settings so that we can get this rendered as fast as possible. And then once one of these renders out, I'll show you how we can just toggle the proxy on and off. All right, so we have one proxy done. I'm just gonna pause this um, just because I'm just showing this as an example. If I was doing this before a project, I'd let them all render out. And of course, this is only for one bin. That's why you have to make those multiple proxy presets because once you've done all the proxies for the intro bin, then you have to go in for maybe your B-roll bin these are all 5K at 30 at 24 frames per second. Select all of them that match the settings. Do that for all your bins. You can queue them all up so it's just happening at once. If you guys are worried about how long it's gonna take to render the proxies, to give you a good idea, for me to render out 6K and 5K clips, an hour's worth of 6K and 5K clips, ranging between 24 and 60 frames per second, it took me about an hour and a half to create those proxies. So keep that in mind. That's actually not that bad for 6K and 5 clip for 6K and 5K. It's always gonna differ on your computer, your rendering speeds, as well as the resolution, as well as if the frames are 60 or 24. Things that have a higher frame rate will take longer to render out because it's more data. I'll just kind of give you a rough idea of how long it'll really take to export it. Now this proxy is made. This is the one that we rendered out. Now we can click the toggle proxy button and it may be hard to see here. It may be hard to see the difference, but if I toggle the proxy, you'll see this is now low resolution, but if I play it, it just plays exactly like butter. So, so if you have that toggled on, all your proxies are rendered out like I showed you, this will work perfectly fine. It'll be a lot easier to render. So make sure you're utilizing this. It's annoying at first, but once you have the presets made for the footage, it's not, it's super easy. You just need to right click and click create proxy with your pre-made presets. And then once you're done with the whole editing, you can just turn off the proxies and then export that. Speaking of which, how do we export? Let me show you our, let me show you my render settings. I have two main render settings that I use for a music video. File, export, media so if i'm exporting my full music video what i like to do is i'll go to h264 preset you can actually just use a youtube preset if it's being posted on youtube it's a lot easier sometimes what i'll do is i'll click youtube i'll go to maximum render quality maximum render and maximum depth depth just check these two and then for our encoding settings our bitrate settings here um, this is 16 16 sometimes i've been making that 25 25 and that'll just kind of make it a little bit more crisp and i don't see that much of a quality loss if you're posting on youtube that's the furthest i would go um, anything higher than that and you're going to start to get quality loss because of the compression that youtube has so don't go past that you can just click presets use youtube render it out or you can do what i just showed you and you can make this 
bitrate 25 25 maybe even 1625. Whatever you like, experiment a bit with it. There's one more thing that I wanna show you and this is another render preset. This YouTube one, this is included in Adobe Premiere, um, but we're gonna create another Super HD preset. This is gonna be, this preset is not gonna be accounting for compression when posting to other sites. So I use this if I'm going to export a clip and then put it into another software like Photoshop, um, or maybe After Effects, if I wanna render it out with something. I'll start with the YouTube 1080p render. So you can leave this all alone. The only thing you need to worry about for this is we're gonna check render at maximum depth. We're gonna check use maximum render quality. And then for our bitrate settings that we've been working in before, so go to the bitrate settings tab here. I changed the encoding from VBR to CBR. And then you can put this anywhere from 25 to 30 or 40. And that's all you need to do. You can go ahead and save that preset. I just named mine YouTube Super HD. Um, and that's just a good high quality, no quality lost preset to use for rendering H.264. You can look at my presets here. Um, we just have a 5K proxy for 24 frames. Same thing, 5K for 60 frames. 6K for 60 frames, 6K for 24 frames. So it gets annoying when you're working with different resolutions, but it has to be done. And then um, I have my YouTube Super HD preset. And then the only other render settings I use is the normal YouTube 1080p HD. And I'll, like I said, I'll check these. Sometimes I'll crank it up to 25. That's it. I hope that helped you guys. I know a lot of you asked about my render settings. I know a lot of you are beginners and this is going to help you a lot because it's helped me a lot. This is something that I kind of learned over like two years of working and just being kind of slow with editing, taking so long, working overnight and just trying to chop down those hours it takes, especially with music videos. If you're trying to do music videos and you're putting the time in, you're editing, putting a lot of VFX into it, you need to learn things like these to save you time save you money and just overall improve your health and your well-being especially if you do this for a living because sitting for 12 hours straight is not healthy hopefully this helps guys anyways leave a like if you did enjoy comment what you'd like to see next this was a more technical thing but it's something that i think you guys need to hear we're gonna get back to our normal schedule of really cool vfx effects breakdowns things like that as always guys thank you so much for watching thank you so much for supporting and i'll see you guys in the next one